Hi guys, welcome back to the ESP32 Chem series. The project I'm going to do today is to create a dashboard for the web, which is going to take images from one or more ESP32 Chem and show them all. Okay, let's get it. Do you remember the local streaming project with ESP32 Cam? I introduced this project at the part number one, streaming into the local network. At the time, the purpose of that project was to handle multiple clients using WebSocket. With this, we could receive images from the single ESP32 Cam and on many devices at the same time. Today, based on that, we are going to upgrade this code so that we can see multiple ESP32 Cams on a single dashboard. I brought the source code that I used in the previous project. The left screen is Arduino ID with ESP32 Cam code, and the right screen is the WebSocket server of Node.js. As you know, all source code are at the link below. I'm going to rebuild this code to see if it works well. Uh, this code was used in the part number one. Uh, the only thing that has changed is the local IP address. Build and upload this code to ESP32 Cam. Uh, there is no problem, of course. Please refer to the previous video for the uh, camera settings and the source code if you need them. Let me change the current local IP address for the web client. After that, run the server. Open the uh, any browser and put the local IP address with port num and client. Uh, there is nothing but only white screen. Log said uh, connected. After rebooting the ES32 cam, I can see the image through the web client. Yes, it works. I can see my hands there. If you look at the browser's inspector, you will see that the blob data continues to be updated. Because I work based on this, I hope you have confirmed that your project is working up here. This is a concept of today's project. It updates images of multiple cameras to WebSocket just like when connecting with a single camera. This is where the problem is. We have to distinguish which image data came from which camera. I did a few tests to implement this. Uh, one of them is before sending image to the uh, WebSocket server from ESP32 Cam, I send the camera information separately. For example, sending text like ESP32 Cam-1 and then send image. It was a simple process from the sending part, but it was hard to process it on the WebSocket server that received the image. The callback function of the WebSocket cannot distinguish between multiple images and camera information at the same time, and also it makes some delay there. Please look at this slide. It's showing how the image file is flowing. A JPG file obtained from ESP32 Cam is transferred via WebSocket to binary format and the client connected to WebSocket server brings the image to the blob format uh, via WebSocket and displays them on the screen. This is exactly how I'm going to do it. It's in order to put the camera information in the header of the JPG file made from ESP32 Cam. Even though it's kind of tricky way, it's very effective. Instead of this manner, creating a new buffer with camera information may result in a memory overflow. Anyway, go back to the JPG header. Modifying the data in the header is likely to cause problems. There may be a problem with not being able to open the JPG file. So I had to find the specific part of the header to modify it without any problems. Let's open the JPG file with the hex editor. For testing purpose, a small file was selected. First, we can see that the last two bytes are FF and D9. For JPG files, the last two bytes always, with, uh, always end with this. This is a marker for the end of the image. Let's move to the first information. It starts with uh, FF and D8, which is a marker of the start, start of image. For next, the second and third are for the marker of an application. The fourth and fifth are for the length of the application field, which is 16. From 6 to 10, it's showing the JFIF string value from NAR. The JFIF means the file format and JPEG is the encoding standard. 11th and 12th are for the version of the JFIF. This version identifies the version of the JFIF specification with the first byte containing the major revision number and the second byte containing the minor revision number. 
So I'm going to use this minor revision number for chemical permission because this is not a major version number and it seems like not a failure. For testing, now I'm going to modify this number to 9. Let's see if we can read this image file without any problems after this change. The image file is shown without any problems. The latest version of the GFIF is 1.02. As a result of my test, there was no problem with the minor version changes in the current system. But I don't know what will happen in the future. If there's a problem, I'll find another way. Let's go back to the code and clean up it first. The resolution of the camera is VGA. I will make a function to connect to the WebSocket separately. This is to reconnect the WebSocket if it's disconnected later. Let's create a WebSocket callback function. This function is executed when connected or disconnected. I'm handling the only open and closed connection. You can add ping handling to if you want. Please don't forget to register the callback function into the client. In the loop, we need to check it's connected. If it's not connected, ESP32Cam doesn't need to take a picture. Also, let's check if there is any data from the server. This is for the callback function too. In the JPG file obtained from ESP32Cam, I will write the tag of the camera in the 12th byte. This code is for the first camera, so put one in it. Build and upload it. Let's see if the WebSocket part is connected without any problems. The server side has not yet updated code. Uh, let me reboot uh, my ESP32 cam. Okay, it seems there is no problem to connect between ESP32 cam and Node.js server via WebSocket. Uh, before set up the server, let me update this source code for the second camera. Everything is the same as the first cam except changing the camera tag. This cam has the value 2 in the terrible byte in the JPG image file. Build and upload it. Let's take a look at the console. It's also connecting without a problem. That's it. This is all for ESP32 cam. The two ESP32 cams are ready to go. It's time to update the Node.js server part. Let's begin with the client HTML file. The title of the, this page is going to be a web browser client. I will use two image tags in the body part. The reason is of course it shows the images that come from each camera. Also to find this image tag in the script, we need to add the ID. It's going to be uh, ESP32-1. The reason for wrapping with the dive tag is to apply the style later. Please download the CSS file from the link below. Let's copy the card dive, uh, contain the first image tag, and change it to ESP32-2. Uh, let's get into the script. Image on the bar 1 is the ESP32-1 from this HTML document and image on the bar 2 is the ESP32-2. Create one variable called image frame. I will assign the image tag I created earlier to this image frame by distinguish which image from which cam. This client HTML file is loaded only when you connect to the server in the web browser. If you connect from a web browser, you will send this text web client to the server to discriminate clients on the server. So what we are going to do now is we have to look at the 12 byte data from the JPG image in the format of the blob that came in and we have to identify which camera is. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to check directly from the array buffer that came into the web socket. 
I will take the array buffer from the blob object and I will just look at the 12 byte information as an uh, 8 bit unsigned integer, which is byte. If the cam tag is 1, allocate the first image tag into the image frame. Otherwise, use the second image tag. I will try to write more concisely. Much better. And now the image frame is targeting the specific image tag, so we can just update the blob image through this image frame. That's it. This is all for client HTML. Go to the server.js. The old source used to manage all the clients connected to the server. Now I'll change to manage web clients only. That's the reason why the web client sends text which is web underbar clients when it's connected. And this is for a client WebSocket broadcasting to every other connected WebSocket client, excluding itself. If WebSocket occurs some errors, the server may die if there is no error handling. To prevent dying, print the error simply. The static path setting is required to read a local CSS file from a client HTML. Let's use Express to set the current path as a static path. Make a CSS file to decorate HTML dive. I cannot explain it in this video. Please download it from the link below. Lastly, I add the style sheet into client HTML. I think we are all set. Let's try accessing the server from the web browser. Run the node server and open your browser and hit the local URL. Looks good. Oh, an uh, error occurred. I made a mistake. Let's go back to the server.js file. There is no data, of course. It had to be under the on message. Run the node server again. Now there is no errors from the WebSocket. Uh, but there is another typo on the HTML page. I'm sorry, I'll fix it. Our errors have been corrected. Now let's see how it's going on. From the inspector, as you can see, there is no error too. Uh, it's time to have a final test with this. Each of the two ESP32 cam gets the power from the independent external power bank. The local server is working in the MacBook on the left and the Android phone and tablet are connected to the server with a web browser. Images received from ESP32 cam 1 and offering to the first image tag on each client. The second camera works the same way. Uh, in this project, we simply put camera tag information in the JPG header to distinguish between sources. As I said, this is tricky but useful for various purposes. I hope you guys have a cool project based on my project. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.